I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. For those with past ties to the Tri-State Family Christian Center in Huguenot, it was a building filled with memories. The main chapel at the center was destroyed by a fire last night. Despite the efforts of more than 50 responding firefighters from 13 area departments who fought not only the smoke and flames, but below zero wind chills and icy conditions. Reports are the religious camp facility off Route 209 has been around since 1919. Paul Butler, the president of the corporation that runs the Christian Center, had praise for the firemen who kept the, the fully involved three alarm blaze from spreading to adjacent camp buildings. Boy, I have to say they did an awesome job with their coordination and saving the buildings on both sides of the, the chapel that burnt down. Talked to a lot of people that are very sad because there's a lot of memories in that chapel. And to see that get down hurts a lot of people. Stop by and call me on the phone all night long, just uh, talking about the history and the moments and the memories they have in that building. But I have to remind them it's just a building. That building can be replaced. The Christian Center operates only in the summertime. Butler did not believe anyone was on site at the time of the fire. There were no injuries. The cause is under investigation. Butler does not believe it's suspicious. I guess it could be electric because it was a vacant building. Uh, everything was shut down. and The wiring in the building was old, probably maybe in 40s or 50s when the thing was built. I don't know. So that, that's the only thing. They have two good-sized pit bulls walking around, so I don't think anybody was on the property because they, they announce when people come around. Butler says the facility will open as scheduled later this year, and he's confident the supporters of the Tri-State Family Christian Center will band together and rebuild the chapel. Saying his administration is committed to a government that costs less, taxes less, and does more, Governor Andrew Cuomo pushed for tax reductions to promote economic development during his fourth State of the State address delivered earlier today. The governor touted his plan to provide $2.2 billion worth of tax relief, including property tax rebates for homeowners and municipalities that meet tax thresholds, along with a reduction in corporate tax rates. The governor also urged legislators to take action to eliminate regulatory barriers that have hindered economic growth and resulted in the loss of businesses and jobs. And he called on state involvement in the modernization of JFK and LaGuardia airports. Look for a full report on the contents of the State of the State Address, including area reaction and program highlights that could impact our region, here at Record Online. State police say Maureen Curry stole more than $3,000 from the American Legion Ladies Auxiliary while serving as treasurer of the local organization. Now the 42-year-old Woodstock resident faces a felony grand larceny charge after investigators say she used the funds for her personal expenses. Curry was arraigned and released pending a January 22nd appearance in town of Woodstock Court. Some drama in Kingston last night, where two-term Democrat Ulster County legislator John Peretti was elected legislative chairman after getting the unanimous support of Republican lawmakers. Peretti was uh, chosen over fellow Democrat Hector Rodriguez by a 13 to 10 vote, and that total included the entire 10-member Republican caucus. Peretti is a former chairman of the Ulster County Democratic Committee, and his decision to align himself with the Republican minority angered fellow Democratic legislators, with the majority leader Donald Gregorius uh, calling the maneuver a, quote, hijacking, saying the Republican members had succeeded in uh, disenfranchising voters who wanted to see a change in legislative leadership. In a speech following the chairmanship vote, Peretti said he was not going to spend one moment on partisan bickering. The turmoil continues in the village of Monticello, where a pair of village trustees tried again unsuccessfully to remove Mayor Gordon Jenkins from the post of village manager during a village board meeting Tuesday night. The attempt made by trustees Larissa Bennett and Carmen Rue failed in a 3-2 vote. Jenkins' latest controversy involves his decision to remove Bennett from the post of deputy mayor. A move Bennett says was the result of her decision to support the Monticello United slate of candidates which is looking to uh, sweep Jenkins out of office this year. Rue has uh, called Bennett's removal as deputy mayor illegal. And Kingston City Police have arrested a Brooklyn man for the theft of more than $1,000 worth of perfume from the Walgreens in Kingston Plaza last January. 
28-year-old Humberto Sarante was charged with grand larceny after he was released in New Jersey, where he had uh, been held on other charges. And in Sullivan County, a Rock Hill woman has been charged with felony grand larceny and offering a false instrument for filing. State police say 37-year-old Melissa Haddon was arrested following an investigation into welfare fraud for allegedly getting public assistance by filing false documents. We are beginning to escape from the frigid temperatures. Tomorrow will be partly sunny and it should feel a little warmer out there. Well, the highs expected to be in the neighborhood of 30 degrees. Friday will begin with clouds and maybe a few flurries with sunshine by afternoon. And the temperatures Friday should hit a balmy 40 degrees. 50 degree temperatures and rain are predicted for the weekend. We'll get the news and information to help start your day in the Times Herald Record. And breaking news is just a click away right here at Record Online. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.